Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this man of God. Thank you, Father, that you fill him with your Holy Spirit from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Overflowing, Lord. Bubbling over, Father, with your word. Your word, Lord. It's truth. It is joy, Father. It is you. So we thank you for your precious word today, given from you for us, Lord. Jesus, I pray, prepare our hearts and enrich us, Lord. Encourage us, Lord, and move us forward, Lord, as we thank you for the word that you've given to Pastor Andrew this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can stand. So good has got all the words this morning. Just got to go back another couple of minutes. And Pastor Andrew's going to preach today. That's been mum done. Um, actually, but while, before we start, um, the word that the Lord has said today has already been declared through the worship with Mike. He said, let the breath of life Breathe in the breath of life. And then Debbie, during some of the, um, at the beginning, also said, let's receive the breath of life. I don't know whether you heard any of that. But God is saying something today. So let's just give him a thanks that he's speaking to you right now. And today is certainly a day that he's going to do something special regarding the breath of life because it's been quite a week. And normally when he wants not people not to be here, the Satan, he tries to put, make you not be here for a purpose because he knows something is going to happen. And today he wants to do that too. So are you, are you ready for something to happen? Because it's going to happen to you. So let us just give thanks. Thank you, Jesus, that you're here right with us. Thank you, Jesus, that we can celebrate what you did for us when we go through communion. And thank you, Jesus, for all the things you've been doing in our life, all the things you are doing, and all the things you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now you can be seated. And now you can stand and say to someone, (laughs) go to someone, what's in your name? Not what's your name, what's in your name? Go on, off you go. Someone you don't know, maybe. Okay, there's some long names there. Yeah. Is, is Fonzie still in here or has he gone out? Okay, Fonzie's just going to show us what it means to when you're, what happens to your leg when your socks want to be blown off. So all turn to Fonzie. And he's going to show us what he mean, what happens when you what happens to your leg when your socks want to be blown off. <laughs> there you go. So if you get that feeling in your leg, that's the Lord. It's not Fonzie. It's not your neighbour. It's the Lord saying your socks are about to be blown off by His word. We're up for that still? So what's in your name? Does anybody know the meaning of their name? Put your hands up if you know the meaning of your name. Oh, oh, yeah, there's, there's, there's a few here. Go on then, Roger. Wow, there you go. Did you hear that? Keep your hand up, Rog. What was it? Roger means? Helmet of salvation. You just made that up. <laughs> We've got another one hand in there. Tallulah? Wow, aren't these wonderful? Living waters. 
There's another one there. Who's that? Burns it? Yep. What's that one? Wow. And she is a bear. In, your, in names, in names, they actually, in the Bible, it actually reveals your character. It can reveal your character and your destiny. Who else we got? I saw some other hands up there. Len, oh, Lena's, oh, I'll tell you what Lena's mean. Lena's in Russian means give me your money. <laughs> oh, sorry, no. Give me your rubles. <laughs> What's your name mean, Lena? Ah, oh, you just made that up too. <laughs> Anybody else got that? Pam? Oh, wow, isn't that lovely? And is she sweet? Isn't she sweet? Who else we got there? We've got there. Collins, is that you, Sunday? Yeah. The, the, the lost boy. <laughs> Fantastic. And who else we got one there? Is that, is that you? Yeah. Who is it? Emmanuel. What's it mean? Beautiful. Anyone else there? Oh, we got Michael. Fantastic. Arlene? Wow. Routon? Warrior. Warrior. Well, that, see, you see how these are? I don't know, but Roger knows. Oh, Gerda, but we're going to ask Rog. Ah. Well, we know she's made of hard stuff, don't we? Anybody else? Oh, Louise? Say again, Louise. Fantastic. The troublemaker here, yeah. Star, oh, wow, and the star she is. Isn't it wonderful? I've got a few others as well. But actually, yeah, in the Bible, it actually talks of names. And uh, it reveals a character and your destiny. Um, anyone in here called Anna? Is there, oh, look, look. Is there one called Ladder? I'll just say that again. Is anyone here called Anna? There she is. Another couple. Is that your middle name? Oh, Laura Anna. Wow. Your name means grace and favour of God. Isn't that wonderful? You knew that. Why didn't you put your hand up before then? Where's... Is, is there someone here called Mailer? Sorry, Sue, Sue. Susan. What does your name mean? Yeah, you do know. Sue, well, I, I know, anyway, from before in our teachings in Esther. Sue, me, Sue is Susan. And in Song of Songs, Susan is called um, the Lily of the Valley, which is actually a picture of the Bride of Christ. Isn't that beautiful? And Pete, did you say your name, Pete? No, I'm the rock. Who? He's the rock. Yeah, we've got rock. Steve, Stephen, where's Stephen? Do you know your name? I had to check this a couple of times. Uh, Victorious and Crown. John, any Johns in here? Jonathan. Uh, John, graced by God, and God is gracious. And Jonathan, gift of God. Amen. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And light is you. So light, light oh my word, my double barrel. Michael, Chris, where's Chris? Is any Chris's in here? Where is he? Do you know yours, Chris? There you go. Why don't you put your hand up then? Uh, Chris, Christ, Christ bearer or bearer of the Lord. Wonderful. Uh, we've done Lena. Linda. Well, is there any Lindas in the room? Is Linda hiding behind that boarding? I can see half a hand. Everyone turn around to see Linda. Linda, what's your... Linda's name means Beautiful. Pauls, any Pauls in the room? Do you know your name, Paul? Yes, you do. It actually makes this, this is a nice one. I had to check this too. Uh, Paul means extraordinary, distinguished. Let me finish this next bit. Let me finish the whole sentence, but it means small or little. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, but as, as in a small whisper which expands into a roaring multitude. Whoa. Daniel, where's da I know Daniel's, he's hiding behind them. Daniel, where are you? Where's Daniel? Can he, where is he? Is he there? Come on, Daniel, let's show yourself. 
Oh, he ran down the stairs. Oh, okay. Daniel means God is my judge. David, any Davids in here? Means beloved. And um, this is one of my favourites. Where's Fashid? <laughs> now, I thought his name meant Prince of Peace. <laughs> but actually, do you... Some of you may not know this. Some of you will. But when... Uh, and he doesn't know this either yet. But when he came to the Lord in the Alpha, uh, in the Alpha course, he... He, um, I, some, I was grabbed by someone. They said, come over and meet this guy because I think he needs the Lord. So I went over him and said, you need the Lord. I just said exactly what God <laughs> said. And he said, so I said, would you like to meet him? And he goes, and he was, his face wasn't the same as it has been that we've known him for the last how many years? What well, feels like 15. Did you say five? Wow. Five years we've known Fashid. But he, we know him to be full of joy, don't we? And full of the Lord. But, you know, before, when he came into that Alpha course and that day, it wasn't the same face. It was quite down and you looked quite low and you looked like white, didn't you? But when I asked him, then I asked him, would you like to receive this Lord that we've been talking of? And his whole face literally lit up. And I always remember one thing about it was his whole face just glowed. And he said, yes. And his life's never been the same since. But his, lo- but his, his name means, Fashi means splendor or shine. Or displaying the grandeur of the sun. Isn't that wonderful? So what's in your name? And that's what God wants to show a little bit today. Because he uses a big thing on names. And he'll use it for your character or the character that you may need or your destiny. Anyone want to reach their destiny that God has called them to be? That's half of us. Anyone want to reach the destiny that God called you to become all that Jesus has called you and created you to become? Put both hands up if you want that. Well, that's, that's your ambition. That should be your ambition. Not nothing more, nothing less but to become what God created you to become. For example, well, for example, my name. He changed my name. Not light, not grace of God, but my, my name, and I've been called that name, Andy, for like 50 years. And during a prayer, when before I came to Spain, when we were asking the Lord, what should, what should we do? How would we do? And, and um, how should I change? He said, I'm going to change nothing. Just change your name. And, um, but what he did say was that I needed to be strong and courageous. And I was being prayed for for a healing during that time. And during that time of he- one of one of these prayers, I was anointed with oil. And the guy actually said um, that he believes he's never done it before, apart from once in his whole seven, 60 years as a Christian, that God wants to change my name. And change it back to its original form, which is Andrew. But what he didn't know was, was Andrew actually means strong and courageous. Do you think God knows what he's doing when he created you? Before the foundations of the world were formed, he knew you, it says. Isn't it wonderful? This is our Lord. And we need to have that revelation and that knowledge that God is with you through all times at all times. Look at Moses. The name Moses. Anybody know what the name Moses means? Yeah. And what, what did he do? How was he, how was he saved? How was he saved? He was brought up out of the waters and put in a basket, wasn't he? What did he do with the, with the Israelites when the Egyptians were behind? He took them through and saved them through the waters. And his name actually means brought up out of the waters. It's incredible, isn't it? What about, um, we'll see the geezer, Noah himself. What does his name mean? It means peace. It actually means a lot more than that in, uh, in Hebrew. But in, in Genesis 8.14, I think, Hancock, if you've, if you've got it, sorry to wake you up here. Yeah. But in Genesis 8:14, it actually says, do you remember that um, 
All the righteous were saved through the ark, through the basket. Another name for it. It's the only time, it's only twice that word is used in, in the Bible is when Moses was saved in a basket as the righteous were saved in a basket or ark. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? We too, the Bible says, we too are saved for those, the righteous ones, who come to the real ark through Jesus. And we are saved from the perils of the world on the outside. And God will says he will not come back his second time through with water, but with fire. But in Genesis 8.14, it says on the 17th day of the seventh month. Say, say, can you say that out with me? The ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. And Noah's name means rest. But the, the vehicle, the very thing that saved the righteous only. Only the eight people that God said were righteous on earth, that the very vehicle that they were saved through, the ark, came to rest on the 17th of, of that month. That month is called Nisan, by the way. Everyone say Nisan. Nisan. Better say it because you'll forget it in three and a half minutes, like I do. But on the 17th of Nisan, and that word rest actually means not only come to rest, but to be at peace, to come to be redeemed, to come and receive deliverance. That's the Hebrew meaning of it. The people were delivered. They received the fullness of their deliverance on that day. Do you know the book of Esther, when all God's people were saved, when they were delivered, it was on the 17th of Nisan too. Do you know when Jesus went on the cross, it was on the 14th of a month called Nisan. But he rose three days and three nights after. So he rose again for our deliverance, for our restoration, for our peace, for our eternal rest in him on the 17th of Nisan, the very same day. Oh, hang on a minute. Fonzie, is it your socks? Socks starting to wobble here? The whole of the Bible is screaming out that you are okay through Jesus. You are the righteous ones. You are saved through the waters. You are saved when the fire comes. When, when, the, when the angel of death comes over this world, which it shall do, those who have the blood of Jesus over them, just like they did on the Passover, shall be saved. <laughs> Anyone want to give thanks to Jesus? Just shout out thanks to Jesus. That's what he's done for us. And he's given us the fullness of freedom of which to celebrate this thing called life with him. Isn't it beautiful? So I need some volunteers, I think. Because I want to show you a couple more before what the Lord wants to do here. Um, can Miroslav get me six volunteers? That's their baby. While, he, while, he's, <laughs> while he's gathering volunteers... I just want you to look at what he's called today. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 1. Again, it's three names. But it says, In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo. The name of, Bechari the name of Zechariah means the Lord remembers. The name of Beric, yeah, yeah, they can come up there. Let's have, uh, let's have a few of them. That was quick. That was a quick six. Did they all come voluntarily? Let's give them, let's give them some encouragement, guys. <laughs> Actually, just you three over there for a minute. So just look at these beauties. Isn't it beautiful? And these three too as well. <laughs> so the name Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo. And this word is for you today, because this is what he wants to do today. Zechariah means the Lord remembers. He remembers you. Anyone, anyone want that? 
The Lord remembers you. Berechiah means, and shall bless you with the promise. So whatever he's promised, whatever he's given in his word as a promise, or a very specific promise to you, he remembers and will bless you with it. And Edo means at his appointed time. So the Lord, guys, will bless you. And I want you to, I want you to, I want you to, re- there's, a, there's a picture in the Bible, which I won't go into now, but it says, reach out to God. And when you reach out to God, he will come down and reach out to you and meet you there. So I want you to reach out to God and proclaim this over your life, that God remembers you. He remembers you, Tallulah. He remembers you, Karen. He remembers you. He remembers you. And he will bless you with the promises he's given to you. And it will be in his God-given appointed time. Hallelujah. In Genesis 18, I need two of you, two of you now. Two more. Stay over there, Sarah. Come, I'll come to you after. Oh, we've got a Sarah in the house. That's perfect. Perfect. In the book of uh, Genesis, in um, Genesis 18, and again, you may have you've heard me say these things, but I'm, I'm coming to a I'm coming to a point of what God wants to say to you today, because He needs to. You need to have something in your life today, and today, and um, in Genesis 18, it says that. Um, Abraham, Abraham the father, sends his chief servant, Eleazar, for the bride of his son and to bring it back on ten camels. (laughs) Yeah, that was nice. (laughs) Pity you at the end. So do you get that? The father, Abraham, sends his chief servant, Eleazar, to get a bride, which ended up being Rebecca, for his son, Isaac, on ten camels. <laughs> God the father. Does anyone, did anyone find God? Did anyone find God? Oh, good. No, you've, you've been to some of the discipleships. Huh? God found you. He was looking for you and has always wooed you. And we just said yes to Jesus. So what are those five symbolic of? The Father sent the Holy Spirit to find you for his son Jesus. And you're carried around on the picture of the church. You're within the church. Because not the whole of the church is saved. Some people worldwide, they come to the church, but they just come to church as maybe because it's a social club. We are very privileged in the churches that we go to. So to see that, Jesus, God, sends his Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wooed you, and you became his bride for his son, and you're in the church, and you're going to be with him forever. Isn't that beautiful? Now can you all come back a bit? Now we need to, uh, now we need to hold these. Hold them. Can you hold them? Turn this way. Hold them like that so no one can see. Okay. <laughs> you get a good one this time. In, um, I can turn that way now. I've got the wrong. Yeah, give me the wrong way around, but just swap, chop your hands over. Swap your hands over, so in the right order. That's part of it, of course. In, um, and I did this on a Tuesday night as part of um, when we were looking at the Hebrew. 
But in Genesis 5, it gives us an, a, a genealogy. Do you know what a genealogy is? I don't know. Can you tell me? It's like a, a lineage. It's like your family tree. Say again. Yeah, that, that's good. It's like a family tree. And it says, this is the written account of Adam's line. So when I call out, when I say their name, they're going to hold it up for you. So when, and, and, it goes, and it goes a little bit like this. It says, when Adam had lived 130 years... He had his son in his own likeness, and he named him Seth. And after he had sons and daughters, all together, Abraham, Adam lived 930 years. And then when Seth had lived 105 years, he became the father of Enosh. These are highly trained individuals, these uh, mirrors. And Seth lived... 807 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Seth lived 912 years, nearly as old as Pete. <laughs> but then he died. But when Enosh had lived 90 years, that's, that is definitely as old as Big Derm. By the way, everybody knows that Big Derm did arrive, Teddy. He's not in hospital, he's not in some ambulance. He sat there in our service with those guys. Isn't that wonderful? And he became the father of Kenan. And after Kenan, Enosh lived 815 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enosh lived 905 years and then he, di he died. And Enosh, he became the father of Mahalalel. Put it in Switch him around. She didn't listen to instructions. <laughs> And after he became the father... See how, you, see how your sons and daughters listen to you? <laughs> when I said swap them round and put them in other hands. <laughs> yeah, that's my cup of tea gone tonight as well, I think. And Mahalel. And when Mahalel lived 65 years, he became the father of Jared. And Jared and Halalel lived 830 years and had other sons and daughters. When Jared had lived 162 years, Jen, he became the father of Enoch. And he became the father of Enoch. And Jared lived 800 years and Jared lived 962 years and then he died. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. And he became the father of Methuselah. And he not walked with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. When Methuselah had lived 187 years, he became the father of Lamech. And after he became the father of Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and had other sons. And altogether, Methuselah lived 969 years. And then he died. When Lamech had lived 182 years, he had a son. Well, I said Lamech. He had a son, and he named him Noah. So you should have there now. Can you all see those names? What did they say? They said Adam, Seth, Enosh, Kenan, swapped them around, Mahalel, Jared, Enoch, Methuselah, Lamech. And isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? Now I want to tell you the meanings of those names. Well, I hope it's written on the back. But man, the name for man means, oh, sorry, that's his way around it. The name of Adam means man. Seth, these are root name meanings, means appointed. Enosh means mortal. Kenan means full of sorrow. Mahalalel means blessed God. Jared means shall come down. Enoch means teaching. Methuselah means his death shall bring. Lamech means the despairing. And Noah means rest and comfort. That's the whole of that chapter, just describing only names. But how they will understand that is... That man, it should not be missed out, don't worry. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> that man 
has been appointed to be mortal and full of sorrow. But blessed be to God, he shall come down, teaching that his death shall bring to, this, to the despairing ones rest and comfort. Fonzie? Anybody else? Hang on, this one's coming off. Oh, it's coming off. I just want to show you another one. So that you don't think that's by luck. The 12... Can you put all those down then, guys? Thank you. And now, Sarah, you can join us. Are you being trained? you know what you're doing that? So it's that way. In this order. It'll be that way around, will it? Can anyone know the set of 12 sons of Jacob? Anyone, anyone know any of them? Was that it? Yeah, any others? You guys on Tuesday night should know this one, shouldn't you? Okay, so the order... The 12 sons of Jacob, I've put them in the order, they're in the Bible, but I've put them in the order of the oldest first. So this isn't a, it's not only the fullness of the 12 sons, but this is in the order of their birth. Yeah? So it's not random. So you should have in there, who have we got there? Have we got Reuben? Fly Reuben up. There you go. Then you should have Simon. Then we have Levi. Then we should have Judah. Then we have Dan. Well done, Dom. Then we should have Naphtali. Gad. Asher. Issachar. They've already done it. Zebulun. No, the other way. Zebulun's first. She's beautiful, but she has to be told twice, isn't she? Oh, sorry, what well, was made my fault, is it? Zeb- oh, oh, I right, got Zebulun on that side of you. Ah. Uh, Issachar, then Zebulun. Joseph, and then Benjamin. Now, that's the order in birth order. They're not all, by the way, are firstborn, are they? They're the order of date of birth. Do you know who are called firstborn then? We are. We're called the firstborn. Why are we called the firstborn? Because firstborn doesn't... In this side of the world, or in the Greek understanding, firstborn is you were born first. Anyone in a family where you were born the first? Well, actually, that doesn't mean in the Hebrew they actually say... Firstborn means something else. Firstborn means you've been appointed. You have been appointed. Who's been appointed? You. Second one, you've been chosen. Who's been chosen? Not frozen. <laughs> chosen. And the third, third meaning is you've been, you are special. Isn't that beautiful? So you've been appointed, you've been chosen, and you are special in the eyes of God. Isn't that beautiful, Sean? That even includes you. <laughs> Wonderful. But anyway, but those words, when you put them together, now the meanings of them. So Reuben actually means, behold, a son is born to us. Simon means one who hears. Levi means attached. Judah means praise the Lord. Dan means he's judged. Naphtali means my struggle, Gad, good fortune, Asher, happiness, Issachar, reward, Zebulun, honour, Joseph, add to my family, and Benjamin, son of righteousness. So when you read that in that order and in that direction, we'll understand that in this beautiful thing we call the Word of God, hidden under those meanings, like with all the others, Behold, a son is born to us who hears us and who is attached to us. Praise the Lord. He judged our struggle 
and brought us good fortune, happiness, reward and honour. He added us to his family and called us sons of righteousness. Thanks, guys. Bless you. Just leave them there. Isn't that wonderful? And can we just thank these guys too? They came up so willingly. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Go back to the light. <laughs> so what is, all, what is all this meaning? Well, actually... Um, the great thing is, even if you don't know the meaning of your name, God says, I've put my name on you. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. In this world that we live in, which is dark and getting darker, fearful and getting more fearful, dangerous and getting more dangerous, we who are of the light, God says, you're not a number in my system. They always give you a number. Do you ever ring up a company and they say, oh yeah, what's your number? What is the number written on your forehead? Symbolic maybe of the times to come where you may need some sort of number written on your forehead or your forearm. But Jesus, God says, I have written something, not of the world, but I've written my name on your forehead. You were bought by me. I died so that you could be in my family. And I call you sons of righteousness. So we're not part of this system. We're just in it. God has called us out and set apart. And he said, my name is firmly written there. So whatever you're going to go through, whatever is in your life, remember that God's name is written on your head. And that changes everything for me. A, a very quick one, I don't know whether I have time, but um, this week has been, I said to somebody this morning um, in the car park, didn't we, Kimberly? So she said, how was your week? Said, it was horrific. But then I said, actually, no, it was just very challenging. All week, not, nothing had gone right. But then by the end of the week, everything was going right. And I sat in the, in the car this week, and I, there's, there's a, I, I had a pain which was excruciating. Now, I normally have pains, and they nearly always, and they always go. And, um, and, I, and I believe it's when the, when the actual, what I had gone through, the doctor said, your body has been battered. When, I, when it was in, uh, in, in England, still going for treatment there, he says, don't be surprised by anything that may come, because your b body has been battered beyond belief for the la every day for the last five years. So, um, so I was expecting some things, but God already forewarned me and said, you will have um, things, but I, my name is on you, and you are my son, and all will be well. I've called you. So when I was sat there in the car on Friday, not only having these pains, I'm with my daughter, Tash. Where's Tash? My beautiful daughter. <laughs> um, my whole chest just nearly exploding and by the time I was picking her up I had a busy week too sometimes not getting back till 10 or 11 at night so it was a busy week but actually um, my chest exploded and I couldn't move and I was sweat and I went white and Tash comes in the car and says all all right dad <laughs> no but she prayed I think she may have texted Deb and they prayed together and you know, when I said this, my long, complicated prayer, and it goes like this, Jesus, 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 everything seemed to be starting to disappear. And then he said, move. I said, Lord, I can't move. I can't move. He said, move. And as soon as I started the car and moved, we parked outside the um, emergencies, full of faith. Parked outside the emergencies. And I got out of the car, and God just breathed the breath of life into me. And everything disappeared. The pain here, and the pain in my chest. When we call out to God and ask him to breathe the breath of life into us, he will respond. Because you're name is written in the book of life and his name is written on your forehead do you want to could you sell that for anything 
Would you give that away to anything? This is what God has done for us. He talks us this breath of life. In, uh, in the Bible, Abra- Abram, which means, that name there means exalted father. He had a purpose given to Abraham. And he changed his name from Abram to Abraham. He added a, he added a hey. And we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago on a Tuesday night. He added a hey, which is actually a letter in the Hebrew alphabet. But he didn't just stop there. He changed his name to Abraham, which means father of many nations. He then got hold of Sarah, Sarai. Sarah, stand up a minute. He got hold of Sarai for a minute. He said, I'm going to change her name too. And he changed her name from Sarai to Sarah. He added a, <laughs> he added a hey. And, he's, and for a purpose, her name means princess. Blimey, Lena. Strong one. Strong, yeah. Strong like the mum, is it? No, anyway, princess or father or, or, or mother of many nations and kings. And it says in Genesis that too, no longer will you be called Abraham, your name will be Abraham, for I've made you a father of many nations and I will make you very fruitful. I will make, I will make nations of you and kings will come from you. And then he says in eight to Sarai, uh, near enough the same. He's going to change his name to Sarah. He changed her name and added a hey. That, that is a letter. We might think of it as an H, but it's a letter in the Hebrew alphabet. It's the fifth letter. Who was there on Tuesday nights two weeks ago? <laughs> and it actually means, watch what I do. Behold. Don't miss what I'm going to show you. And it means breath. And it means life. He breathed into Abraham the breath of life for his purpose and for his destiny that he created him for. And he gets hold of Sarai and says, hey, he adds a hey to her name, a letter H, and it becomes Sarah. So that she was equipped to also become all that God created her to become. He breathed into her H, which is the fifth letter, which means the breath of life. Are your socks moving yet? And today, he wants to do that with you. Those who put your hands up saying you're, you're wanting to become all that God has created you to become. To fulfill the purpose and your destiny, Yorick, that he's called you to be. To become all that he called you to become. He says, I want to, you need the breath of life in you, Lenka. He wants to breathe into you life. And life to the full. He wants to add to you that, hey, he says, watch what I'm about to do. Watch what, what, look at my power, my majesty, my sovereignty. I don't have to change your name now, but just like he did with the disciples. Remember what Jesus did to send the disciples on their way. In John 20 verse 22, he called them together. They were his disciples. They were believers. But they needed the power of the Holy Spirit. They needed life being breathed into them. And in John 20 verse 22 it says, And with that he, Jesus, breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. They'd already received the Holy Spirit and salvation. But he's now saying, Receive the breath of life to empower you to do all the things that they were called to. And he's calling for that for us today. Let us stand. As a, get the, can we have this song on uh, Hancock? Today, as we finish, I don't want us to be, I don't, you know my phrase, I don't like to read it, just read it. I like to do it and become it. So I want you today to ask yourself, do you really want to be and do all that God wanted you to be and do? then you're going to need the breath of life, the hey in your life. And that means an action. That means a receiving. And in this song, 
the name of Jesus is over you. And the words are exactly what he wants to say to you today. He's saying, allow me, open the door of your heart and allow me to breathe in the breath of life to equip you for what you're about to face, for what you're about to have to go through. Because you will receive challenges. But the victories out of those challenges will be greater. The victories out of those challenges shall be greater. While this song's on, I'm not going to pray for you, but I want you to do something. I want you to make a step forward, something so that you remember that you're ready and waiting for the hay in your life. The breath of God to breathe into you as this song goes on. And I'm going to pray. Thanks, uh, Hancock. Can you turn it up? Can you turn it up? You're going to follow God and what God's called you to do. You're going to come across challenges, greater challenges. But his name is on your forehead. The breath of life he wants to breathe through you. So you shall have the victory. Don't sing it, declare it in the heavenly realms. Jesus.
Daddy's name. The name of Jesus over your life. Over Jesus over your family's life. Your friends, your neighbours. At the back, shout his name. It's time for him to be glorified. His will in your life. Healings. His power. The breath of life to come into you. The day is chosen today. Glorify his name. Glorify your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The challenges shall become, but the victory shall be even more. Declaring his name without fear. Declaring his will without fear. He's called us to be a fearless people, fearlessly confident in him. He shall not forsake you. He shall never leave you. When you're in trouble, and you shall have troubles... His name, remembering his name is written on your head. The very, the very person that created all things, the heavens, the world, the galaxy, the stars, the moon, everything in it, things seen and not seen, he has decided to come down and called us righteous men and women and he wrote on your, your hearts and his forehead declares his name. You're his. How, if he is for us, who can be against us? This is our Jesus. And he's calling us with these times ahead to, to pray for each other, to pray for Israel, to pray for God's will, for praying for our neighbours, to pray to be lights for him. But you need the breath of life. So, Father, thank you, Lord Jesus, that this morning you've breathed the breath of life into your people. We walk out of here changed and ready to take on and become all that you created us to become. Fearlessly confident in you, Jesus. Not because of what we've done, not because of what we're going to do, not even because of what we may believe or not believe, but because of what you have done for us. It's already a done deal. We stand in the presence of you, covered by you. And Jesus, we can walk boldly and change the, wherever we go, the atmosphere. Because Lord, your Holy Spirit, the breath of life lives in us. And just as you sent out the disciples with this breath of life, then Lord, you want to send us out right now filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the breath of life that comes direct from your mouth into our hearts, into our very beings. And we receive it as much as we will allow it to happen. I say 100%, 100% for me and my family. Declare it to, to the heavenly realms. You want 100%, not less. I'm going to give you every room in my house and say, Lord, take it all. Swamp me, baptize me in your spirit. And let us receive the fullness of life, the life to the full and eternal life. In Jesus' name. And all God's people declared, Amen. And amen. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen.